Alright, in this video we're going to analyze the graph of a polynomial. We'll start with an example where we don't have the graph. Right? If you're given the equation, you can always generate the graph. Since polynomials have lots of complicated behavior, it's best to use technology to get a graph of these. Um, so we're going to start with this one, y equals x times x minus 4 times x plus 6. Uh, we're just going to use Desmos to graph this. Just zoom out on the y. Right? So there's a nice graph of this thing. Once you have a nice graph of that, then you can do things like find the y-intercept. Uh, from the graph, it's pretty obvious where the y-intercept is. It's right at the origin. You can also find that from the equation and validate that. Remember, the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. And of course, that's when x is 0 because you haven't moved left to right at all. So if we put x equal to 0 in this equation, we can also verify that it is in fact the origin. And of course zero times anything is zero, so this is equal to zero. Alright, so the y intercept is the origin. The uh, next thing you might want to do is find the x-intercepts and their multiplicities. So remember, they're also called roots or zeros. And we can see three of them here, right? There's one at negative 6, there's the one at the origin, and there's one at 4. And those are all going to have an odd multiplicity since the graph goes right through. So if it's even multiplicity, then the graph would touch the axis and then turn around. But since it crosses it, it is a odd multiplicity, and we're actually going to confirm that the multiplicity is 1 for each of those zeros. So the zeros are negative 6, 0, and 4. The way to find the x-intercepts from the equation is to let y be 0. And if you put and y is 0 here, you can see that it's already factored. And the 0 factor property will allow you to see that you could get x equal to 0, uh, x minus 4 equal to 0, and x plus 6 equal to 0. And each of those equations would lead you to the numbers 0, 4, and negative 6. Since this is such a common occurrence, we actually can say that in general, if we have the factored forms, that the numbers subtracted from x are the zeros. In case 4 is subtracted from x, that's the 0. In this case, you'd have to write it as a minus a negative 6. Right? x plus 6 is the same as x minus a negative 6. So negative 6, and uh, this one could be written as minus 0. The multiplicity of the root is also the exponent on the factor, right? the number of times it appears as a factor. These all show up just once, so then you know they all have multiplicity 1. Uh, if they were to have an exponent, 
such as you know you had uh, had something like this, then you would know that the x-intercept at 4 had a multiplicity of 5. Right? So if, if they have an exponent on them, or they appear multiple times, the uh, exponent will tell you the multiplicity. Since there's no exponent, we, uh, we don't have that. So they're all multiplicity 1. The last thing to look at is the end behavior. And when you look at the graph, you can see that the end behavior goes up to the right and down and to the left. So how do we write that using the notation that we've learned? So going to the right, we'd say x um, goes to arrow uh, infinity. Right? So x arrow infinity means going to the right. And right, as x goes to infinity, y um, goes up, right? So as it went to the right, it went up. And so y arrow infinity is the same as saying going up. The other side of the graph was as x goes to infinity, as you go to the right, the graph goes up. As you go to the left, the graph goes down. So going to the left is the same as x going to negative infinity. So x arrow negative infinity. And going down is y arrow negative infinity. So as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. And you can verify that this does match up with what we would get if we just looked at the equation. Looking at the equation, you can tell that this thing is a degree 3. Right? You might have to multiply it out, but x times x times x would give you x cubed. And the leading coefficient would be 1, positive 1. So since it's an odd degree and has a positive leading coefficient, we would be able to determine the end behavior just from that, as one that goes up on the right and down on the left. Now, having the equation is nice because you can validate everything with that, but what if you were just given the graph? Take a look at this example, where we just have the graph and we want to determine that same analysis. Well, we can't necessarily get exact values unless they're nice whole numbers. So a lot of times you'll have to approximate with a graph. But here they end up being nice whole numbers. The y-intercept you can see is at negative 8. So the y-intercept is uh, 0, negative 8. And we can see two x-intercepts, x equal to 1 and x equal to 2. Now, the intercept at x equal to 2 is like the other one we saw where it goes passing through the x-axis. And so that's going to be one that has an odd degree. Most likely, it's a degree 1. Or a multiplicity 1. But the intercept at 1 is even degree. Sorry, even multiplicity. Uh, you can see that it goes up and touches 1 and then turns back around, so it doesn't cross the x-axis at 1. So that means the multiplicity is even, most likely, multiplicity of 2. So if this was a third degree polynomial, we would know for sure, because these multiplicities have to add up to the degree. But if it was a, say, degree... Um, 5 or 7, um, then you could end up having 
a higher number for these multiplicities. Still, uh, typically when those multiplicities get larger, these things really start to flatten out, and it could be more obvious if that was something like a multiplicity of 4 there. The end behavior is pretty obvious. It's the same as the other example where it goes up on the right and down on the left, so we can actually use the same set of uh, end behavior expressions. And remember, we don't have the equation, but we can actually tell from this that the degree, the largest exponent, has to be odd. And it's probably 3. All right, if it's a degree 3 polynomial, then we know that we'd have multiplicities of 2 and 1 to add up to 3. And the leading coefficient is definitely positive. Uh, based on that, we can actually get something of an equation for this thing. It won't be exact, but get something like y equals um, let's see x is minus 1 and that's a degree 2 right that has multiplicity 2 at that 0 and then x minus 2 and that one has multiplicity 1 now it could have any value you want for a so in order to find A, you would actually need to solve for it. Um, this could be done if you put in the y-intercept. So we can actually do that. Put in the y-intercept was at 8. And now you can solve for A. And you get negative 1 squared, which is 1 and negative 2. If you divide both sides by negative 2, then you can see that a must be negative 4. Oh, which isn't right. Okay, so I'm, I'm freezing up here because we know that the leading coefficient is positive. So a can't be negative 4, right? Uh, so knowing that, I made a mistake. And the mistake was that the y-intercept was not at 8. The y-intercept was at negative 8. So uh, we needed to put a negative 8 in there. And that would give us a positive 4. So we can now write the equation out based on the information we have. And uh, the graph of this will look very much like the graph you see above, because that's probably the original equation.